Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Football Manager 19, not 20. Don't turn the video off yet. I promised you uh, this is episode 16 of our South American Journeyman. I promised you guys last episode in episode 15, which was about a week ago, that uh, FM20 had come out. I'd be getting to work on that, which I have. We've already got three episodes up. Episode four will be going up tomorrow on Monday or maybe today because this may go up tomorrow as well. Um, but I promised you guys I wanted to put a bow on the season and wrap up FM19 and, and you know, see it through. Uh, even though I knew a lot of, hold on, uh, even though I knew a lot of people may not be interested, but those of you that were watching the series, the journey may want to see how it turned out. And I wanted to see it all the way through myself. So, I've played all the matches. Season's over. I do need to go ahead a couple of days to get to the end of season player of the year stuff, but kind of wanted to just put put a bow on everything for you. So not sure how long this will go, but we, we've got a lot to catch up on. I am not going to go through each and every game. Uh, in fact, if we go this way... There we go. All right. So this was the Brazilian quarterfinals. That was the last episode. And we're just going to put the uh, goal scores up. So uh, we had a 1-0 loss. And then we got a 2-0 win, a dude and Taquez with goals. And we'll just kind of scroll through those. Uh, we picked up an own goal draw, a loss. Uh, we did lose in the semifinal first leg to VDG. Uh, that sent us on a little slide there. Uh, one one and then we had a one one draw so we were knocked out two to one on aggregate in the semifinals which was a great season right i mean that was a great run i think we were expected to reach the third round we made it through the fourth the fifth and into the semifinals so that was successful uh Takez picked up another goal there and you can see losses a four two win uh, Julian Suarez, we started giving him, he was a youngster, started giving him some playing time, and uh, he picked up his uh, first goal of, of his career there in a 4-1 in a loss. Uh, Pepe with a brace, uh, Gomara's with a brace, a couple of wins, and I'm just kind of, so, you know, win, win, draw, 3-1 loss, 2-0 win with an own goal, Couple of draws, couple of wins. Uh, that was that was kind of big drawing with Santos. It did take a 90th minute goal, but you know Santos was our was our dream club for this save. Unfortunately, we didn't make it, but um, you know that's that's how it goes sometimes. Uh, CEC, our our affiliate club, our our senior affiliate that we're now even with, uh, we beat them three to two, uh, lost four to three there. So again, I'll just let you guys kind of browse through those and look at the goal scores. Uh, you can pause the video, slow it down if you want to see. Uh, and then down the stretch, uh, we got a 3-0 win, a 2-1 win, and then a 0-0 draw and a 1-0 defeat. So if you want the goal scores, go ahead and pause that. But there's our run. There's our run. I mean, you know, we we lost quite a few. You know, a few games. I mean, what's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight losses down the stretch in league action. So, you know, it uh, it was what it was. I mean, you know, we we were expected just to battle relegation, right? So, how did we end up? Well, let's take a look. We finished fifth, boys. We finished fifth on the season, 18 wins, nine, to, nine uh, draws, and 11 losses, 63 points. And, yeah, I mean, we finished well behind the, the two leaders. I mean, Santos finished second 11 points off or 10 points off. But, you know, in this third through fifth, we were only two points off and we were positive goal differential. So we were right there. We were right there. And, you know, we were only supposed to fight bravely against relegation. We actually avoided relegation 
right around the beginning, I think it was after the SPO victory, I think it was that week that we officially avoided uh, relegation. And then uh, it was around this FLU win that we uh, laid claim. So remember, let's take a look at details here. So fifth position, right? Well, we get $8.2 million, yeah. And the top five teams qualify for the group stage in the Copa Libertadores. So we're in the group stage of the, of the uh, Liberty Cup for next season. Unfortunately, we will not be here for that, but we made it to the group stage, boys. And if we go to that... Five hundred and fifty thousand per round, so we're going to make a little bit of scratch for that next year, or we would, we would. Um, let's go to the inbox. Uh, let's see. So we qualified for Copa Libertadores, so that's great. Uh, the initial budget seven point one seven million. Sitting here feeling like my mouth is dirty from lunch, but hopefully it's nothing there. I don't know if y'all can see that or not. Uh, so 7.17 million in uh, payroll, 3.69 million in transfer. So that's not bad. So being that we're and we we remember we were negative when we took over. Boom, 19 million bucks. This has got to be the greatest two season turnaround I've ever had to go from negative money to 19 million dollars in the bank. And making money, making money. Um, we made eight million profit, eighteen million on the season. Wipe out the, you know, eight and a half. I mean, we were still, we were still at profit, and that was only with one game, right? So we did really good, and now we're, we have another two point two million dollars in payroll. Don't know that we would be able to use that, but you know that gives us a lot of flexibility, right? Uh, eight and a quarter million for finishing fifth, and we paid out two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. That's a that's a good return. That's a good ROI, as they say in the business sector. Uh, let's go ahead, and I want to finish the. Uh, I want to get to the player of the year, and then we'll look at stats and and the final statistics and everything else. So is it right there? Nope, nope. Uh, record high. We had already clinched a record high with like three games to go. Uh, seventh position. So new record uh, finished there. So that's great. I think we finished off with a bang. I really wish we could have played through the season. There were a lot of wins in there. Um by the way, speaking of wins while I'm scanning ahead here, if you have not started watching my FM20 beta save, go check it out. Uh, the new episode that goes up tomorrow, I think, it's the uh, group Champions League group elimination game. We're in the final game of Champions League group stage and we're in fourth position. I'm telling you guys, this might, and I don't think I'm blowing my own horn here, not the greatest video, but it might be the greatest game in football manager history. I'm not kidding. And that doesn't mean that I won, but it was an exciting game. Go check it out. Um, but anyway, here we go. All right. End of season awards. Taquez, fans player of the season. Of course he was. Tabriri had a great season, as did Jefferson. Uh, goal of the season was Taquez. Let's go ahead and watch it. Usually these are a disappointment, but Taquez had some pretty good goals. All right, that's Taquez there. Lumped over the top. Nice touch. Brought it inside and from way out. So, Colin Barry. Signing of the season, young player of the season, good job. Uh, fifth position. Uh, and team meeting. We're not going to do that because I'm not going to scroll ahead. 
Uh, we end up at 100% untouchable. That is awesome. They've gone on spring break. Because I'm going to end it right here. Oh, coach of the year. Sweet. That is excellent. Uh, let's see. Award winners. So Nelio, our goalkeeper. Brazilian goalkeeper of the year. Nice. Tiburi, defensive midfielder of the year, finished second. Um, and Taquez, second striker of the year. Not bad. Uh, I do want to congratulate Nelio on the award. And we'll look at his final stats. All right. Uh, let's look at uh, me first. It's all about me, right? Uh, so we end up at two and a half stars. Not the best, not the best. I get it. 266000 a year. I know a lot of the guys that get five stars are making that in a week, and that's okay. Uh, so let's see. Our history started off at Minnesota for, what's that, 17? Four years. Universitario de Sucre for two years. Two years at Cerro Largo. And two seasons, three seasons at... Uh, at Paysandu. So good job. Uh, what did we win? Anything? My history, milestones, um, landmarks. There we go. All right. So we won. Uh, we won the national second division. We won the Torino Intermedio. Runners up in the league and winners of the Tessera Division de Venezuela. So a couple of pieces of silverware. Uh, head coach of the year uh, in two leagues in Brazil. And shortlisted for the Uruguayan head coach of the year at Cerro Largo. Pretty happy with all that. Could have been better. May maybe could have been better. And what else? Anything else in there? No, I think that's about it. All right, let's go into the squad. All right. First, we're going to start with appearances. Nelio, 60 appearances in goal. Jefferson, 47 starts, two reserve appearances. All right, leading goal score, 23 in 46. That's a one in two. That is very solid. And he ended up with, no, that's not what I want. 16 and 37, two years in a row. Now it's 16 and 35 in the league. This year it was 16 and 36 in the league. So very, very happy with his performance. He actually stepped up his average rating this year. And I think he was a great get. I think signing him on loan and then picking him up for 525,000. He's valued at eight and a quarter million now, so we'll probably be able to sell him. Uh, I don't know, is he getting where does it show me? If he has anybody interested in him, I thought it was in that information screen, but yeah, I'm favored personnel, so that's good. But he was a great signing. Uh, 17 goals for Pepe. I believe that might be a career year for him. No, no. He had 14 last year. Second division goals, though, right? 12 and 33 this year. 5 and 12 in the cup. So he really stepped his game up across the board. Uh, the dude... We signed him for 450,000, 10 goals, six assists. Uh, he was, I think he was key to our success this year. And uh, Jean Tiburi, 23 years old, been with Peyton from day, uh, Paysandu from day one. 21 starts last year, finally stepped into the starting 11 every day, 11 goals, five assists. I think he was coming into his own as well. Uh, so quite, and, and look at the look at the age on these guys. Now, um, Augustin Rojas did uh, 
did come to us right at the end of the season, a couple of matches left, and said he thought he had accomplished everything he could with our club and he wanted to move on. He's 29, he'll be 30. That's about the time I'll cut ties with a player. Um, so if we can get, he's valued at 3.8. If I can probably get two and a half plus for him, we'd probably sell him for sure. Uh, but I've promised him I'll let him go. So we'll see what happens there. He's Argentinian as well. So that'll open up a foreign slot for us. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm talking like we're still going to be going forward here. Um, what else? Uh, assist leaders, 12 assists for Jefferson and 11 for Miguel. Uh, Miguel's the uh, right back and uh, Jefferson's the left uh, attacking midfielder or the left winger. So that's where bulk of our assists. But look at the look at the number of assists and players with assist. I love seeing that where you're not relying on one or two guys. And then, you know, even though we only talked about a couple of players, do, the dude with 13 goals, Tiberi with 12, Gimares only had 18 starts, 12 bench appearances, and he finished in double-digit goals. So five players with 10 or more goals. And then we still have three other players with five or more. And, I mean, geez, we go all the way down. In fact, if we look at that. I mean, we actually go outside our, our 12 subs with people that have scored goals. That's crazy. That's just, that's a lot of goals. So, uh, very successful season. Uh, anything else we want to look at in here? Um, I, I went ahead and I was still doing contracts, even though I knew it was the last year. So, we've only got a handful of players that are going to, you know, these guys are all on loan. I think we're going to let those four guys walk. Um, so that's going to free up you know, a little bit of money. Not a ton. Nobody, no big earners in there. Nobody valued it more than a, you know, a couple of, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. Except for Miguel, but he's not our player. Our guy's, you know, 1.4 or less. Uh, dynamics, hierarchy. So we end up really good there. Uh, we do have some guys that want to leave. If we look here, 28 players support us, one player with no opinion, and nobody against us. So that's really come a long way. Uh, what else? Staff. I think that's about it, guys. Um, yeah, we didn't really have anything. I wasn't making any transfer moves for next year. But uh, the fact we've got $19 million in the bank... I don't know why we're still at 80%, but that's okay. Uh, I'd probably request that to be increased because we're making money. But um, very successful season. I am very happy with that. And, um, again, I was really happy. Uh, Taquez, I think he turned out to be a great goal scorer for us. And I think he was probably the signing of the of the season uh, or of the play, of the of the year for me uh picking up him we had a lot of good players um let's go back through job history let's go to minnesota i was there through 2021 all right so this would have been my last year Troncoso, Bautista, Brito. I remember those guys. All right. Who did we who did they sell out after that? So in the next couple of years, a couple of guys on free. Nelson Reyna, I remember him. Louis Marin. Betancourt. I remember him. I think I remember Quintero. All right, well, that's three years down the road. <coughs> All right, the next club was Sucre, which was one year. So that would have been 22. Okay, right, yep, we brought in Peter Sadie Flores. So the year after, they sold Queller. Okay, 50000 Bejarano, 
for a little bit. Pachico, a loan fee, $700 a month. Profacio, Berendog, they sold him off to Aurora. And David Cheka for nine and a half. And let's just check the next. Oh, and there went Sadie Flores for 100000 How much did I bring him in for? I brought him in for, ooh, that was a big loss. He was the guy that I overspent. I had negotiated, and then they negotiated, and I didn't notice it. So we took a beating on him. Poor Peter Sadie Flores. He had a good career with us, but he was not worth the million and a half, and that really put us in a bad boat. Uh, let's see. I don't recognize him. Diali. I recognize that name. A lot of loans. I'm just looking to see anybody that they sold. I'm not even really looking at names. All right, so that was Sucre. All right, Sarah Largo was through 2026. So that was my last year there. Okay, we sold Moira. All right, so this year, Anchetta, they sold him for 32 to Albion. Baller. I think he was a reserve. Uh, yep, yeah, back line. Good call. Brito, uh, Britos on a free. Trabatoni went out on loan. So, yep. Yeah, so that was. Um, oh, so let's see. So they are. Mid table. Mid table. Uh, Let's see. Competitions. Senior squad. That's not what I want. Where do I find the screen I'm looking for? Is it this screen here? History? No. Competitions. Domestic leagues. There's one that shows with a graph, and I, I don't know where to find that. Um, but anyway, so let's see. So Sarah Largo, we finished fifth. They dropped to 11th. But they're still up in the Primera Division, so we got them promoted, and they stayed there. That's good. All right. Uh, Universitario was Premier Division de Sucre. Still in the Premier Division. They actually finished seventh both both stages. And uh, let's see, Minnesota. Now we got them promoted to the second division. Oh, and they're back into the Tessera division since I left. Oh, that's that's a bummer. So we had them in the Tessera. We got them up into the Segunda. They stayed there for a while, but they fell off. Uh, now they won. I wonder why they didn't go back up. Don't know. Not sure. Not sure why they wouldn't go back up after winning it, but all right. Well, I wanted you guys to see where the clubs that we did manage ended up at. Um, some of the players, some of the transfer moves. Uh, I, I had the one botch with Peter Sadie Flores. Uh, that was my regret. He was a good player, but not worth a million and a half dollars. And uh, yeah, I think our uh, our little striker here, Takez, I think he was the FM19 uh best player signing I think that we had only 23 too so he's got he's got a long run in front of him and uh yeah boy I'd like to see him continue oh, it's it's interesting when you kind of watch these players and here's here's an example 
I had signed this guy, and I don't remember if it was in this series. I think it was in FM20 I was mentioning. In FM18, I signed him with Leeds United in my lead save, and he was astounding. Um, so that would have been 18, 19, back, back around here, um, before he got this eight goals performance. So I signed him away from Leon, and he ended up having a really good run. Uh, he was still with Leeds when FM18 ended, when I ended that save. I think he had like a 40-goal season, a couple of 30-goal seasons. Uh, he was just outstanding. So uh, I went in, and uh, oh, that's, I meant to, I meant to click on his... Uh, so he's valued at $60 million now and uh, six goals in nine appearances in the current season. And I did an inquiry and uh, from my from Paysandu in Brazil and they wanted $202 million for him. So it's interesting, a player that I had never heard of in real life didn't appear that he actually played for them very often. Uh, you know, when it comes full circle and I start seeing now we're several years later uh, in the game, not necessarily in real life because we're only a year and a half, two years down the road from when I signed him at Leeds. But, you know, we're 10 years down and in the game and he has just become this, you know, pretty big star um, and, you know, $200 million player, basically. Uh, even $60 million would be a lot. But uh, anyway... Uh, I thought that was interesting, uh, so I wanted to point that out because I knew I had mentioned him somewhere, and I'm, I'm guessing you guys saw it if, you, if you're watching my FM content. But guys, I had a great time with Football Manager 19. Uh, we're off to a good start. I am playing the FM20 beta save. I say I say beta like the like the European guys. Uh, beta save. Uh, I'm playing with Real Madrid. Um, Check out episode one of that if you want to know why. But it's Luka Modric. That's who I wanted to play with and uh, have on my squad. So that's why we took Real Madrid. We're off to a, we're off to a, you know, it's an okay start. But um, I'm telling you, episode, I think it's episode five, possibly the greatest match in football manager history. That's all I'm going to say. Go check it out. Anyway. Thank you again so much. Uh, great run with FM19. Uh, we went from about 300 subscribers to over 400 subscribers during the course. And I know in the scheme of things, for some of these guys that get 50, 100 new subscribers a week, yeah, it's not a big deal. But that's that was huge for me, uh, going up over, you know, over 400, picking up 100 subscribers in the course of a year. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, that means a lot. You'll, you'll never know. Um, but um, And we're off to a good start now. I think we're up over 450 already. Um, through the end of FM19, some of the other games that I'm doing. Uh, and we've picked up, I think, five or six new subscribers just since the start of FM20 a few days ago. So off to a good start for this year. And uh, it's all thanks to you guys. I hope you enjoy the content. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new, or if you just haven't done it yet. And uh, guys, thanks again. See you around. Bye.